world and posted on the bulletin board maintained in the municipal building for public moments announcements would you please join us in a moment of silence and write uh, stand for a pledge of allegiance to the flag I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America. 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 Here. Mr. Ray? Here. Mr. Riley? Here. Mr. Tappan? Here. Mr. Taylor? Here. Mr. Sabagio? Here. Councilman Schindler? No. Mayor Francis? Mike Francis? You were here. He left the building. Okay. Okay. I'll go. We'll get him in when he comes back. All right. Okay, Mr. Gilbert. Here. Okay. Minutes. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes other than the ones that I'm going to go over in a moment? Well, let's hear those first. Okay. I have on the Casper, Kevin Casper, uh, number two on the new. Uh, new applications. Uh, we have that Councilman Schindler made a motion to approve the Kevin Casper application. It's actually that he made a motion to approve the application to continue until October 5th. Right. And I think the same thing on the McCarthy number three, the next one. Uh, let's see here. Yes. Schindler made a motion to approve the James McCarthy application, but it's actually the application to postpone or to, to carry until October 5th. I have those two corrections. Are there any other additions or corrections? On, uh, <clears throat> on TBB real estate, we had talked about the ADA parking and further investigation of that and it only says we mentioned it but it doesn't say anything further to that 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 was going to be looked at and determined what it should be okay. so that's mm -hmm. it, it does say ada designated parking ballots or chain link fence in the rear emergency unforeseen first as uh, circumstance access only will be locked seconded by taylor it doesn't identify what we're going to do with it. Okay. During the meeting, didn't Mr. Don didn't they say Mr. Donigan was going to deal with them and Mr. Rushke on the exact number of spaces? Yeah, the exact number of spaces and the ADA. Right. Action for it. It just says talk you left it up to Mr. Donigan to handle that. That doesn't mention that there's an action to follow. Correct. Just mentions ADA. It doesn't say to follow, to pursue, to find out about. John, if I'm not mistaken, he's a public. He's a public uh, entry to his business. Isn't there a statutory requirement to have the necessary ADA requirements in it? Oh yeah, there is. Okay, then he'll meet the statutory requirements or get fined. So there you go. And we start out with a blank check, fill it in instead of we identify. I, I think I put in the resolution. I dictated it earlier uh, that the ADA space would be identified, you know, and located, or and space. So that should be covered, uh, Mr. Duncan. And numbered parking bill. Numbered. Uh, I can't recall whether I talked about the number of parking spaces or not. I'll have to take a look at that. We got two residences. We got a whole bunch of things. Got a that's mm -hmm. why we will circulate the resolution and make sure it's appropriate. Okay. I did email the resolution to the board this afternoon when I received it. Okay. It's got war and peace in it. I'll check it out. Okay. 
All right, any other additions or corrections? Okay, then I will ex I will entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve. As Subject amended. To revisions. Right. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? I'll make a second. Okay. Secretary. Mr. Duncan? Yes. No, I just lost the meeting. Mr. Here you go. Gaffney? You're on. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, Mr. Gaffney? Yes. Mrs. Crock? Yes. Mr. Ray? Dane. Mr. Riley? Dane. Mr. Tappan? Yes. Mayor Francis? I'm back, but I'm going to abstain because I didn't hear it all. Okay. okay. And Mr. Gilbert? Yes. Okay. At Dan this Daniel, uh, 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 Alan, we ought to recognize that the mayor has come yes. back into the meeting and he's here. Yep. At this time, I also want to mention that uh, in the future, I think we should adjust the uh, order of minutes, the order of the uh, meeting and have the uh, continued applications after the minutes, followed by new applications and then work sessions. I don't think we should put the work sessions right at the beginning. So without, without any objection, I will ask our secretary to make that adjustment. Okay. okay. Are there any objections? No. No, no I only, uh, uh, Bill, uh, mm -hmm. is there any governance on how our order is uh, dictated in an ordinance or any other thing? I mean, is it? No, is it, no, 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 there no isn't. That's, that's up to us, I believe. Yeah. That's, if yeah. it's all, it's totally up to us, that's fine. Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I just don't think it's fair to make uh, continued and new application uh, oh, yeah. wait yeah. until after we uh, we have the others. Okay, we have no continued applications. We have one new application, Howard Irwin, block 10810, lot 68, 1C Point Pleasant Road. The applicant would like to install a new dock with a two-story boathouse. Variance is being requested, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, is Mr. Irwin, Mr. and Mrs. Irwin here today? Yes, we are here. Okay, uh, you wanna raise your right hand, please, and be sworn in by our attorney. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, was this truth, will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? <laughs> I do. And your names, please. My name is Howard Irwin. And I'm Benet Irwin. Renee? Renee. Renee, where could be? And you're the property owners? Yes, we were the property owners. We've been living here since 2015. Okay. Uh, Mr. or Mrs. Irwin, whoever is going to talk. Well, have, you been, have they been sworn? Yes, they've been sworn in. Yes. Uh, are you in receipt of Mr. Rushke's... Uh, review of the application and his uh, technical review. Yes. And do you have any questions or comments or concerns with it? Um, my preference would be if, if allowed by the um, board, Mr. Chairman, would be to go through my exhibits and then uh, entertain questions. Um, that okay by you? Uh, okay, go ahead. All right, so hopefully I can do this properly and share my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? No, I don't. Uh, hold, on, hold on. How about now? There we go. I see uh, your screen now. You see. Uh, there we Part go. Of, yeah. That is okay. Um, I'm going to start out with the. Um, Please confirm that you can see this. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see a caterpillar. Oh, okay. I don't, we don't want to see that. Hold on. <laughs> bear with me. Bear with me one second. <laughs> it was right the first time. Okay, here we go. How about now? Okay, I see uh, a site plan with okay, local, perfect. local 
Mm -hmm. All right, so I lay, this is this was the exhibit I labeled this as exhibit S1. This is the um, it was a survey that was conducted uh, just recently by um, KSS Survey. On the survey, um, had one of my engineers. Um, I've been in, in the real estate uh, business for over 35 years. Um, I am a uh, executive vice president of construction at a company called Woodmont Properties, so I'm very familiar with this process. And uh, so I had one of our in-house engineers uh, draft up this um, proposed layout. Um, so what you'll see here, uh, the added um, yellow um, flags were a request of the engineer's review, uh, but he put out with a quick summary. So one of the first reasons why I'm here in front of you, the board tonight is because my seawall which is a, is a rubble wall is leaning and falling over. Uh, I was intending to fix it the last time we had a drawdown, but unfortunately that didn't happen. And so one of my primary concerns is the restoration and repair, um, more like a replacement, excuse me, of the existing steel wall. So uh, that's no, number one of, 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 of my priorities uh, to get accomplished. Um, it's going to be replaced in, in exactly the same location. <clears throat> the plan is to remove the pre-existing boat ramp that's located right here. Hopefully, you can see my map, my my cursor, and um, so the wall would continue straight through. And this is, shows a layout of the dock with a boathouse uh, on top of it, and steps that are on the on the land, obviously, that take you to the second floor. Um, one of the um, comments made by the a, uh, um, engineer reviewing it and one of the variance requests relates to this dimension right here, which is 14 feet. And um, some of the unique situations of my property were or are that my neighbor, uh, who was actually in front of the board for, for a uh, addition and renovation permit um, or plan, their dock, their lot's very narrow, about 25 feet. Their dock is right on the property line, so that's existing. And when I purchased the home, the existing dock was also on the property line, and my neighbor has a dock right next to it. So I'm restricted. I have restricted access to uh, only one side of the existing wooden dock right here. So that's one of the primary reasons why I'm looking to expand the dock area be able to have uh, room for a, a second or third, actually a third, second boat or visitor boats primarily. So they own, only own one boat. Um, the reason why I placed the dock and boathouse at 14 feet was primarily because this area of the lot, there's a large tree here and there's several large trees on my neighbor's property. And um, that, that's the only large tree on my property um, it was to avoid uh, blocking the view and avoid putting the docks in the middle of in the middle of my lot. And I have a very unusual lot in that it's a pie shaped configuration. So it just created some of the variance conditions, but it's created you know, the lot frontage is rather large because it's a pie configuration. And, um, the uh, the rest is self-explanatory. The dimensions of the dock of the proposed new dock is a U-shape, 35 feet deep, 31 feet wide. And I'm going to go to another exhibit and show you how and why I came up with those dimensions. So I'm going to go to exhibit S2. Next, S2. Uh, it just shows a blow up of the, um, the dock and where the boathouse, excuse me, the, yeah, the new dock and where the boathouse would sit above the dock. And the intent is to have a minimal area, three feet to walk down on this side of the dock, three feet on the inside of the boathouse, and then the remaining area with a little bit more room uh, for some chairs and stuff on this side of the boathouse. Did it? S3, my next exhibit, 
This is an exhibit. This was asked for by the engineer review. This is a uh, done by Mulhern and Culp, structural engineer. This exhibit shows the proposed construction of the uh, retain the bulkhead to replace the existing boulder, you know, uh, mortared in rock boulder um, uh, wall head wall bulkhead that's there now. And one of the problems that I have is the existing wall is, uh, especially after these last storms, is basically um, flush with the high water mark of when the when the, when the uh, lake gets to like 9.5, 9.6. My dock, my existing dock, and my bulkhead are underwater. So the goal is to get to build a new one that's much higher that will go and keep the water from my property from going into the lake and also keep the lake from washing off to the water. Okay. Those are the three exhibits that I have that are, I call them S exhibits. And then I'm going to go into the architectural exhibit. Um, but this, this is a picture of a boathouse that obviously is constructed on the lake. And what I modeled my, my uh, architectural hand drawn plans on, and um, which has a you know, single boat open area, a covered uh, open area, and then an enclosed area behind. This is, a, I think it's on um, Lakeside Boulevard, part of, near the, um, the main lake area. That, uh, that but I'll just go through the floor plans. Um, the first floor plan, very similar to the overall layout that I showed, just shows that you know, there's a three foot area on either side, inside the boathouse, five foot area in the back just to be able to get around and some minimal storage and then a set of stairs that lead to the second floor. The second floor, like I showed in the picture that I was uh, had, um, there's an open area here with a deck with a, with, a, with a railing and an enclosed area that would have a den and a fireplace in it and then here's the stairs that come down from there. The next exhibit is A4, and that's a roof plan. And in order to minimize the visual impact and the height, I uh, you know, hip roofs on both sides, soffits, there's no gables, or you know, nice uh, low pitch roof. And we'll go through the elevation. Uh, so, like the picture, it shows the front elevation looking from the lake towards the property. We added the, uh, from the initial application, the engineer was looking for light fixtures. So these are the typical light fixture locations. Um, and this shows the hip roof um, and uh, the height of the structure. It is showing at 28 feet, um, which is one of the uh, variance requests I have. Uh, I believe the accessory structure is at 18 feet. Maximum height, but we'll go through the list of variances that I've done for all these years. This is a side elevation. This is the left side. Again, adding a couple of minimal light fixtures, the window, the door, and the glass railing, and the hip roof, as I explained earlier. Right side elevation, very similar. Uh, only one window opening up to the porch the side of the chimney. The next architectural exhibit is just a, a cut sheet of a proposed light fixture as requested by the engineer. Uh, you know, minimal wattage, 60 watt bulb, LED equivalent uh, with a nautical lake type theme. And that concludes my exhibits. Um, Mr. Chairman, if you'd like, I can go through the variances that I've requested. Um, we're opening up to any questions on the exhibits if you'd like to do. Okay, go ahead. Open it up for questions or go through the variances? I'll go through the variances okay. first. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, this was part of the package that I uh, included. Um, everybody see the Word document with the list of variances? Go ahead. All right, so the first variance uh, relates to a rear yard setback because there's stairs shown. I needed to have stairs to get up to the second floor. 
Um, and they are located six feet on the back of the boathouse, and that's why there's a that kind of their variance. Um, the second variance request, 242-330, the seven accessory structure building height, 18 feet is permitted. Um, the proposed boathouse is 28 feet tall from top of the dock to the peak of the roof. The height uh, is the minimum height of a two-story structure with a pitched roof with front rear hips with both ends to minimize visual impact of height. The next variance um, is, is 242-18A, structure within 50 feet of the lake. Boathouse, and this variance is a result of having the stairs, the boathouse stairs uh, within 50 feet of the lake. 242-15E, maximum number of accessory structures. Uh, currently there are two accessory structures, a garage and a shed. We, uh, and I'm not sure if this is interpreted correctly or not, but um, the garage is actually connected to the home. I'm not sure if it's an accessory structure. Um, there is a, a storage shed um, that's, um, that's on the property and, and um, the boathouse would be a third if the garage is, is considered an accessory structure. Variance number five, 242-30C, maximum number of docks. Um, there should be, not be more than one dock for each 100 feet of the frontage. The lot frontage is, is 106.39 feet. The existing dock is currently located on the property line and only accommodates one boat. The proposed dock, the proposed dock accommodates two additional boat, boats plus one in the boathouse. Number six, 242-30C, number seven, distance between docks. The distance between the docks shall be a minimum of 21 feet. The proposed new dock is 14 feet from the Northwest property line. Uh, my, my neighbor has their dock installed on our shared property line. The proposed located about 14 feet from the property line have a greater separation than the typical 10 feet. Number seven. 242-30C, number 10, maximum size, a regular shape dock. The regular shape private docks in the shape of the U are permitted provided that all of the requirements in the chapter are met. The sum of the lengths of all the lakes should not exceed 50 feet. The sum of the proposed dock is 101 feet. It's 35 feet on each side plus 31 feet across. The total width of the dock is measured along the shoreline should not exceed 25 feet. The proposed width is 31 feet. In the case of U-shaped docks, the maximum, maximum distance between the two vertical legs of U shall be 12 feet. The proposed distance is 11 feet, which is conforming. Number eight, 242-30D, number three. Minimum distance between boathouse and dock. No boathouse should be closer than 28 feet from the neighbor's dock. The proposed boathouse is 17 feet from the neighbor's dock at the northwest property line. The boathouse is placed closer to the property line to minimize the visual impact from my living room kitchen and outdoor patio area. Number nine, 242-30D, boathouse water area coverage. Any combination of docks shall not occupy more than 15% of the water lot area within the pier headline. That's conforming. In no case shall the boathouse alone exceed 10% of the water lot area within the pier line. The proposed boathouse is 10.54. And last but not least, 10, number 10, 242-30D, number eight, there should be no living area in any boathouse. The boathouse has a family room or fireplace for three seasons. Okay, the, then there are six uh, pre-existing non-conforming conditions. Correct, and of which, of which, uh, when I purchased the home, these were these were not, uh, also existing non-conforming. Yeah, right. Perfect. You, do I need to read that for the record? Or no, I don't think so. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rushke, do you have a comment about any of these? Well, I, I guess, um, you know, the, the applicant basically went through the variances and, and the, these were more of 
what the applicant desires versus you know, I think there should be a discussion regarding you know, what is the hardship and, and, and uh, associated with, with these variances. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, Mr. Uh, Duncan, I believe you went out and looked at the uh, property. I went out there today. Uh, did you have anything to comment about? A couple things. What is the size of the greenhouse next to the shed? Uh, eight by ten. Eight by ten. And what is the size of the shed? Let me go back to the survey. That I don't know off the top of my head. It looks like it's about sixteen by sixteen. It doesn't That's look nice. like what's on the thing. I, you know, I didn't bring a tape measure, but it looks bigger than that. Um, well, it's a rectangle. It's probably more like. So probably like 12 by 16, something like that. What that, is the, the decking on it? When I, when I purchased the home back in 2015, I was in front of this board. Um, one of the additions to the property was the shed. Uh, I did get approval at that time. And uh, as long, along with the, the garage um, as well. So those, those were in front of the board for a, a prior hearing back in 2015. Right. We we both I was there as well as Alan when that happened. What is the makeup of the existing dock? That's what wood is that correct? You're breaking up, Bob. The I think the question was what is, how is the existing dock constructed? Right. Yeah, the, well, this dock has been here a long time. It's um Mostly supported by a, um, a crib wall with, with ballast in it. There is a uh, two um, during the flood, I think of 2000, the thing got lifted off its, its moorings and they, the owner uh, had um, some piles driven. So there, in addition to the, the, the cribbing underneath, there is, a, there is a set of steel and two, there's two piles, steel piles driven at the end of the dock. Okay, one of my last questions, the, uh, the bulkhead wall. How do you propose to do that? So the plan is to remove the rubble wall. And as you can see from this elevation, the current elevation of the property is 920, like 924.6 to 924.9. And it's and it's low. And I was talking about the, you know, explaining how the water floods on, floods on top. So by coming in with a small excavator, removing the wall, placing uh, the soil the boulders on the property and so that I don't have to barge it off and raise the grade of the property to about a foot pretty much all the way across so that it goes from 926 here and it's much it's a flatter across this area right here. So I'm, I don't have the intention is not to have any in, negative impact on the volume of the lake and put the wall exactly in place where it is now just make the top of the wall higher. How do you how do you do the uh, stability of the lake bed below? How do you get all that done? You're gonna you know I mean even if they have a drawdown, it's not going to be to that extent. How do you handle that subsurface preparation and not impact the lake? So um, having lived here through, I'm going to open up this exhibit. Having lived through the the drawdown four years ago. The, um, the area in front of my property, when the lake is drawn down, there's about 30 to 40 feet of dry land. And in reviewing the structural design with my, with my structural engineer, the only need to put the footing um, 24 inches below the current lake bottom. So we don't have to go down very far. We do have to go back three feet two onto the property, but the, the existing wall that's here, the rubble wall, Plus the footing, this soil will be, will be put onto the property. The wall gets constructed. I'll we'll use a concrete you know, forms and a pump truck, and so that there's no limited disturbance. And then the excavator will backfill the wall and raise the grade of the property so that we don't have a we don't have a negative impact on the lake. They take the boring samples there along that wall. Have I done boring samples? Yeah, have the ability of the surface below. Um, no, I do know from them driving uh, some piles for the wave runner holes that uh, that hold the floating dock that there isn't rock there that, I, that we're aware of, if that's what your concern is. 
Is the wave runner thing considered a dock, by the way? It's floating and removable. I, it's, I don't know what your interpretation is. That that was going to be one of one of my questions, Mr. Irwin. Are you intending to keep that uh, that uh, jet ski uh, float? No. Once once the um, once the uh, if this thing gets approved, the plan would no. The plan would be to move it. Well, move it though. Uh, move it and keep it on the property, or um, or just remove it. The, this the issue is where it is presently. It would be considered a dock, and it would be an additional. Uh, you you have noticed for you know more than the the, the one dock for the property, so the, you you notice properly to include that. And I think if the board's pleasure, it could be remain, but um, but ultimately, if it's uh, other than if it if a jet ski ramp float or a boat lift, unless it's a pertinent to a, a legally um, setback dock. Um, it's considered another dock. So the, I, I, I don't even see it on the plans. It, it, they didn't, it's the not survey, there. The surveyor didn't pick it up because it's a move. I guess he assumed it was a removable structure floating. So to answer your question, Bill, um, or another board members, the, the intent is to keep, I'm not getting rid of the wave runner. I'd like to have a wave runner. I bought it. I'd like to keep the floating dock. Um, where it'll be placed exactly, I have not resolved because the intent would be, I have a lift right here now, a movable lift where my boat is on, that that would get moved into the boathouse. And I haven't thought about where to put the, the wave runner dock, but it would, it would still be, I would, look, I would like to still install it on the property. Well, I, I don't, okay. With Go ahead, Bill. Well, if, um, if it turned out that uh, I mean the board was um, in uh, agreeable, possibly you could have the variance to have it um, with the ability to um, to to locate it. Although then we're going to get into it. Well, let's put it this way: as long as it didn't go on the other side of the boathouse, if it were to slide in between the the existing dock and the the the, the new dock for the boathouse you know that flexibility wouldn't affect any side yards and then, then the having the extra dock wouldn't be a, a, an issue other than you needed that one variance most likely if every you know if we get, if we get approval the boat that's on the lift now we go in the boathouse that's the plan the wave runner will probably move over closer to this wooden the wooden dock um and one of the engineers requests was you know could make a presentation or Represent, you know, about thinking about removing this dock. And one of the reasons why I don't want to remove it is one, it's in good shape. It was restored when the after the flood and um, all the all this ballast and everything that's underneath there, there's a lot of rock and debris and I prefer not to have to dispose of that. Right. Well, as, as Mr. Rushke uh, mentioned, uh, the applicant has, has told us a lot about what he would like to have, uh, but has not gotten into uh, any idea of, or any, any discussion of uh, how it fits, uh, why we should uh, grant the variances. Uh, I have a letter from the Lake of Pacon Commission, which I'm sure that, uh, that we are going to hear from them uh, when I open this up to the public. Uh, why should we grant these variances? I mean, what, what is the hardship that, that is created by our not granting these variances? So, so um, when I put my application in, my intent was to um, best utilize my property. And as you clearly stated, this is the applicant needs request for what I would like to do. And the reason why I'm asking for the variances and I propose the plan is currently because of the configuration of the pre-existing dock, which has been here for a long time, and the fact that it's on a property line, there's nowhere on my property that if somebody comes to visit my boat, which is one of the benefits of living on the lake, there's nowhere for them to dock. And so that's the, that's the reason why I'm requesting an additional dock area 
So yes, yes, what I'm asking for is more than just a voting uh, you know, dock area. Um, but because uh, I'm going through the trouble to rebuild the entire bulkhead, which is a major uh, construction project uh, and expense, I wanted to uh, put a plan together to um, for future, the future construction of a dock and a boathouse. Um, the hardship, you know, of this condition here, and one of the variant requests is I have the same problem on both sides. I got a, an existing dock on the property line, and then my neighbor's dock is right here, and their boat is right here, and I couldn't put my boat on their water property anyway, so I'm squeezed in um, on both sides. And that that doesn't uh, that doesn't uh, do anything about the fact that uh, we're looking at a boathouse which is two stories high, which exceeds the maximum height and is a, uh, a three season boathouse, two stories. There are no other, there are very few other uh, two story boathouses in the area, none uh, which are visible when I went down to the, your bulkhead. There's a, there's on, uh, I think it's 11 Point Pleasant, which is three houses down, um, is, a two, is a two story boathouse, a big one. Um, Think about it. it's like a, a double garage with you know living above, and that actually obviously been there a while with its true living quarters fully enclosed. Um, Mr. Chairman, I have, I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. So I'm looking at this drawing. I'm looking how close you got 14 feet from the property line to the new boathouse, which is pretty close to the other existing dock. Right. What if you took this beautiful boathouse, which I think is quite nice, and move it over toward the center of this lot, take out the old dock, and then you can put a boat on each side of the lake of, of the boathouse? Well, um, Mr. Mayor, to answer your question, I was trying to avoid, I'm willing to slide, slide the boathouse over a little bit. Um, I'm trying to avoid putting the boathouse in the middle of the property. One of the, the benefits of living on a lake and buying a lakefront piece of property and paying the taxes that you pay because you live there is to have a view, really nice view of the lake. And, and make the boathouse lower. If 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 the if the variance can't be approved and, and I'm not I'm not convincing it up to the board, then I will come back with a conforming uh height single story boathouse um provision. I, well, I, I think I, I think that would I think that would serve you well to do that. But uh, I'm looking at optimizing. You know, look, I'm looking at the positive and neg negative criteria of everything you're doing, and everything you're doing is is nice and it's it's, it's really a wish list. But practically speaking, you know, we're we're trying to get you closer to compliance, and so that that existing dock is kind of is kind of a, a, a buggy thing here. So if you could move that boathouse over, so you could put a boat on each side of it. You don't need the old dock. We're looking at 16 variances for the property, and the property is fairly well developed at this point. And, you know, when we have 16 variances for one application, why do we even have variances? Why do we even have ordinances if we got to go through the routine of 16 to solve a boat? You know, we got an extra dock. We actually have two extra <laughs> Technically, we have the jet ski dock. We have three structures, not two. I mean, I think we just have to look at how many variances we're going for on an already built property. Just an opinion. Yeah, well, that that that's fine. But still, if we if we if we optimize the, this new development that that we're doing by getting rid of the old dock and moving the big one over, I think that solves a couple of problems because you could put jet skis and boats on each side of that. And so you bring your activity right to that boathouse, which probably should be lower to begin with. Right. And now, but it serves the practical purpose of where do you put your, where do you put your, your boats and, and wave runners? I think you could do it right there. Let me, let me ask a question of the board or the board attorney, just to make sure I'm understanding this correctly. <clears throat> the, it, I guess, regardless of the number of, of, of stories. So if it's a one story boathouse, the, um, the ordinance still reads 28 feet. Um, I'm currently 17 feet 
So I would have to move it over another 11 feet for the boathouse to be a conforming, lo conforming uh, location. Yep. Correct. Uh, yes. And sure. if it was 18 feet, <clears throat> if you were under 18 feet, instead of going up to 28, that's another variance. Mm -hmm. You know, try, how do we eliminate some of these variances and still keep your wish list together somewhat? Yeah, you, you, I mean, it, it, it's quite a beautiful idea, but, you know, we if you scale it back a little bit, I don't have a problem with it. And that, that's how you do it, just by taking one at a time. Just for clarification, so just to explain, I'm um, trying to read the ordinances and understand what you're saying at the same time. You, wh where did the 16 feet come from? Someone mentioned six, making it 16 feet. I just want to make sure I understand. They're talking about the height of the, uh, I think they were discussing the height of the boathouse. If well, you can reduce the height of the boathouse so that it would be compliant with the accessory structure ordinance. Right, 18 feet. Yeah, I understand that. 18, right. Right. I was I my, my biggest concern and I and I appreciate the board listening to, to what, what what I'm trying to do is my my, my primary concern is not to have this thing sitting dead smack in the middle um of the property because just the way the house and the lot is configured, the views are all over here. This big tree right here, you know, blocks the views looking to this direction. And I, I'm trying to minimize how far this thing slides over. So I think the biggest, the variance of the 28 feet is the challenge um, when the neighbor can't put a boat on their side. The boat's never going to exist here because that's that's on my side of the, of the property. So when I put 28 feet between, um, well, I guess the boathouse and the dock, then, um, and I have one boat there, there's just, it's just there's a lot of uh, what I'm calling wasted lakes, lakefront space. Um, from from my obviously from my perspective, um, so if there's a comp, even though it's a variance, if there's a comp, there could be a compromise to the 28 feet, that would be greatly appreciated. You know, when we're talking about views, when we when we do land use and talking about views, that's usually something that the that the applicant has to deal with. We we we've had issues with that, and your view is not guaranteed. So if you're saying that you're going to put something to block your view. Then you have to design around that, and still, Again, yeah. still get what you what you're asking for. Right. We're, we're this board. We're we're about block and lot, and views typically are not block and lot orientated. So you're going to have to balance your your what you want to do on the property to maintain your view, and get that structure within the ordinances, uh, closer to the uh, closer to the ordinances. It's going to be a balance. Okay. Back facade of the building of the house itself. I mean, it's all window. No matter what you do, you're going to block a little bit of it. Um, but you also have ample view that people would kill for just from a couple windows. I mean, it, there's windows everywhere. Understood. Uh, I want, you know, my application, is, as, as you noted, is my wish list of what I'd like to do. And I appreciate the impact, the input from the board. Um, the other question I had is because I wanted to sort of get a feel so when I resubmit, I. Um, you know, hopefully don't waste everybody's time to do this multiple times, is if, if I get the, dot, the building to be conforming in height less than 18 feet, if I slide this thing over, is the board, um, I'd like to get a feel for the board on what, does this dock have to be removed? Uh, what is the distance between the other side of the boathouse and that dock then? I mean from, well, this thing's going to move over. You mean from right here to here? Yes, right now. Um, that dimension I don't have. It's probably around 75 feet, something like that, 75, 80 feet. Okay, so if, if you moved it over 11 feet. Oh, no. uh, you wouldn't hurt anything. Yeah. You'd still have room on both sides. Is the water line 106 feet? The total water line on the property. 106.35. Yeah, 106.35. Yeah, and this is this is a 10 foot, little under 10 foot dock. And so it's um yeah, so you're at uh, 96 and then you subtract uh the 31. 28 feet, right? And then that tells you uh well actually 28 plus 31 if we're moving it over. 
So 28 plus 31, 59. So it's 96 minus 59. No, I was wrong. If you slide it over, 37 feet apart. Yeah, but you have 31 feet of the proposed You got 10 feet of the other side. You have 106. You got 40% plus you know, the count, the uh, jet ski thing, which you can, on, on any of those stocks, you can put the jet ski bump up. On any point, you build a new one, you can put it up. It doesn't necessarily have to be that we can't hear you real good, Bob. Not that we mind, but you're coming. You're breaking up. Hey, you're breaking up a lot, Bob. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. um, well, the comments about the fact that it's a floating jet jet ski uh, dock versus a lift. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, it could be a lift on that. You know, that dock is how many feet wide? The main dock on the boathouse that you're proposing. This area is ten feet right here. Okay, so that that's fairly wide to put a jet ski. Side there, lift it out of the out of the out of the water. In the in the very front, you know, you're not gonna. You said you only have one boat. That's the boat out. Right. Okay. So the rest is for visit. So and that gets the whole side. That gets the whole other side of the boathouse if he moves it. Uh, yeah. Access for people to park on that side of the boat of that boathouse. Yep. Mm -hmm. You boat bo boat on each side and one in the middle. Yeah. I would suggest if he does something like that, that the walkway on the left side, that's only 2.8 feet, that you better make that about three or four feet. Because that 2.8 feet is not going to be on the left side of the boathouse. That, right here. Yeah. If you move it, you better make that bigger or wider to so make it safer. Understood. And, yeah, but it'll be more functional then. Absolutely. Okay. So. Can I ask a question of, of the chair or, or the attorney? What, what's the process? What's the process for resubmitting and coming back in front of the board? Well, you, would we, ask you, you could <laughs> you could request a uh, an adjournment until mm -hmm. a certain time. So uh, in def almost indefinitely, uh, we have meetings set up through the end of the year. Okay, and uh, then you could come back uh, with a new plan for us. Okay. How long do you think it would take to amend your plan? Oh, uh, very quickly. I can have it. I can have it done in a day. So, oh. amending, amending a plan is more about me making a decision. Obviously, I got to sketch up some new drawings. But um, so, um, I, I leave it to the board when they would want want me to come back. If you want me to come back in thirty days, that's fine with me. Do I need to do a new notice? Uh, well, that depends on uh, how how we look at it. Uh, when it is and how we look at it. Can I, 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 well, the I have one question. We are calling the garage a separate structure, and you're saying the garage is attached to the house? Yes. This so attached garage. directly, or is, it, is there a porch between the two? Porch. Uh, there is a porch. The roof so is not attached directly to the house. Correct. You can't walk from the garage into the house. Correct. <laughs> Bill, does that classify it as a separate structure or would it be one structure? I believe I believe the ordinance and accessory structure um, indicates where we have a, a an accessory structure like this attached by by way of a breezeway that it's still considered it would still be considered an accessory building. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, so, so the, variance, the variance list is written as correct as, as Bill Bill provided the variance list. So, what is the pond crossing the uh, property on? This was a pre-existing. This was, it's a little uh, fake. There's a pump that pumps the water up. This is uh, was here before I got here, and it was pre-existing. Pre my neighbor is aware of it, and they they had no problem with it remaining as is. Okay, and over the hot tub, what is that blue box? Uh, that 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 I mean, that's my cursor. That that's not. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Thought it was a new roof. So. Um, Chair, Mr. Chair, so we just should we indicate to him what we want to do have an extension, or keep it continuing? What are we going to do? Uh, well, well, yep. Let us move. Okay, just just a second. I have to uh, I have to go get my phone. Hold on, Mr. Irwin. I, there was one other thing I was going to ask the the, the greenhouse. Um, technically, that's considered a building. 
Um, and, and again, your notice was appropriate because, of, you know, you've, you've noticed for more than the, you know, the extra accessory buildings or uses. Um, so I, I assume you wanted to keep that. And so it just, we should probably clarify that. I mean, technically it's a building, if it's less than six feet from the shed, that would be a variance. Um, and I think your, your side yard setback at that point in the rear yard, um, well, at the worst case be six feet. So I'm sure you're okay on that. But I just figured I'd mention it while they're considering whether you're gonna need notice or not. I, so Mr. Mr. Haggerty can, can think about that. Right. What, the, what do we have? This, the, looking at the plan, what do we have that's separated from the shed? The, the garden is actually a, a, a greenhouse. A, a greenhouse, yes. That that greenhouse, if this was a, a deal breaker with the board, I would remove the greenhouse if that was a deal breaker. It's a, you know, it's a four hundred dollar aluminum structure that's got plastic panels. I would have. So I, if we need to paper it for a variant, the list is a variant, so it's fine. If it's a, a critical issue for the board, I would remove the greenhouse. Okay. okay Bill, did it notice say, uh, is notice just simply said uh, excess number of accessory structures? The notice says, um, Oh, well, it's under 242-15, maximum number of accessory structures. Yeah, the notice is, is just about additional accessory structures. All right, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I hate to have you go through an exercise which doesn't seem to be helpful at all. And is it the applicant's request that this matter be carried to the second meeting in October without further notice? Oh, 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 oh can we, let, let's find out if we got room on the agenda first. Uh, yeah, we do not. We do not. We are, it would be the November 16th meeting would be the next meeting that we have room for uh, any kind of applications. Uh, November 16th would be perfect for me. I have no problem with that. That would be great. Okay. okay. Your plan to be in 10 days ahead. Yeah. There you um, go. The new application needs to be submitted 10 days in, in advance, correct? Well, what we, when you say new application. I'm sorry. New exhibits. New exhibits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there any, I don't know if the engineer is on this call, is there anything in the uh, document that I submitted that the engineer would need additional comments or additional documentation other than a revised site plan and re revised architectural plan? John? Yeah, the, the one thing that, you know, based on the testimony, he is going to require um, an NJDEP permit, you know, raising bulkhead and filling um, within 25 feet of the um, shoreline will need a DEP permit. So I, I, I think, um, you know, the board may want to see where how far that fill is going to be. Um, you know, it, ultimately, if you're disturbing more than 1500 square feet, you should be providing a, a lock rating plan. All right, so, so I'll, have, I'll, I'll have the gr new grading lines added. To, they're already showing the existing. I'll have the engineer add the grading lines to the plan of the proposed mm -hmm. grading based upon the retaining wall section I provided. Because typically, okay. you know, the board is going to be concerned with, um, you know, construction out of the wall, soil roads and sediment control measures, and just to make sure, um, you know, that that's just uh, you know, what we what the board typically sees as part of an application like this. Understood. All right, so I'll create a separate plan that shows the grading and, uh, you know, silt fence location, et cetera. Right. And be before we go any further, let's open this up to the public. Let's see if the public has any comments about this. Mr. Hefley, you're up. Yep. Uh, can you guys uh, hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay, so it's uh, Bernd Hefley, uh, attorney for your neighbor, uh, Mrs. Jarosinski. She's the... Uh, immediately adjacent property to the west of, of yours, Mr. Irwin. And um, she's had me come out tonight to uh, take a look at this and, and see what questions uh, we might have with regard to what you're proposing. I've listened to everything <clears throat> and uh, I, I do have a couple of questions. So with regard to the garage um, and the shed, so that was a previous application before the board where, where variances were granted with regard to the property? Yes, in 2015, I think it was uh, September 2015. Okay, and, and those yeah, variants, 
I'm they sorry, were your client was a property owner and they were noticed for that hearing at that time. Yeah, no, no, I understand. That's not my question. So, but the, those variances that you were granted at that point in time, those are the variances that, that created your now uh, pre-existing variances, which are for lot coverage and lot width. Uh, th that was created as a result of the previous approval to allow additional construction on this property for the garage, right? Uh, not 100% correct because lot width was not changed. You know, obviously the lot didn't change, um, um, but coverage, lot coverage, was, was I'm sure was one of them. And, and side yard setback because of the accessory structure of the shed. Right, and it, it it's fair to say you have an undersized lot there. It doesn't conform to the zone to begin with. It's pre-existing, I guess. Right, yeah. all, all, just about all the okay. lots, yeah. Yeah, but my point is the variances that were granted before allowed you to you know, build additional structures on this property and uh, it created, uh, you know, the variances and, and basically the property is fairly well built out. Now, I listened to your testimony and it, and the question that came from both the board chairman and from the engineer was with regard to the hardships that are being created for you. And your answer was the real hardship here is that it's boat dockage and that that's the issue and that your friends can't come over and, and dock because the dock that you have is only one sided essentially. And it was <clears throat> me, and I ask you, did you consider simply moving your existing dock to the center of your property? Because well, that would uh, give you all the boat dock you needed, and then you wouldn't have an accessory structure uh, variance by simply moving your existing. <clears throat> you considered that? Um, I'm not. I'm not interested in entertaining moving this dock that's ballasted in. It's in there to stay and I don't want to remove it. I don't want to move it. If I had to remove it, move it, it would be a total demolition and new construction. And if I'm going to construct new, that's why I'm proposing or discussing with the board proposals for a new dock. No, I, I understand, but if dock, if boat dockage is the issue, if you constructed a new dock in the center of your property there, you could dock all around it and that would satisfy the hardship because that's what you said was the hardship. And basically, Mr. Heffley, that's what we're suggesting he do by moving the boathouse over and lowering it. Right. But, the, but my, other, my other question is, I understand from your testimony that you don't want to move the boathouse uh, over in front of the house for view reasons. <laughs> I think, let, can I speak for a second? I think it's important that my wife and I have heard the recommendations by the board we are going to take everything under consideration with a new plan um, and make some financial decisions because all these things affect cost and planning and determine what we come back with. But the message was delivered very clearly by the board that the setback between the our neighbor, your client, and the boathouse need to be conforming. So we understand that message has been delivered and, and I understand it 100%. But that's a requirement of the, that's that's one of the requirements of the board is not going to grant a variance for. Okay, I I just wanted to reiterate that because uh, it's it is it's important that you listen to the board. But your neighbor is there also, and she has certain rights. and And I'd rather not put in an objector case. So I'd, I'd rather just discuss it with you. So that twenty one foot requirement there that the board suggested is very important to your neighbor, as as would be the one story boathouse. So, um, and with regard to uh, the size of the, of the dock uh, and the irregular shape, have you considered shrinking that? Uh, I will take into consideration the comments of the board with the new application and see what I can do. You know, as one of the board members commented, the three feet on, or 2.8 feet, because I was trying to keep everything as tight as possible, is not safe. So we'll look at we'll look at the area of the dock. Maybe shrink this up a little bit so that we have less dock area. Yeah, you know, I'll see what I can do. But you know, to build a boathouse that doesn't hold a boat or doesn't make it accessible, then I'm not I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna build a boathouse. I, I I gotta be smart about this too. It's a big investment. Um, so we'll take that into consideration. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Irwin. Okay, thank you, Mr. Uh, Hagley. Can I, can I make anyone a else from the public want to comment? Question or comment? 
Colleen, you're up. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, Colleen. we hear you, Colleen. Colleen. Colleen, there's going to be a revised plan. Do you want to wait to see that revised plan before you comment? No, I, I did just want to make the applicant aware of um, something before I, before they continue in their uh, application. Okay. Um, Colleen, do you swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And you're speaking on behalf of the Lake of Pathon Commission. Yes. Um, so for the applicant, um, I'm the administrator for the Lake Opacon Commission and um, the commission reviews land use applications within 200 feet of the lake to um, look at water quality impacts, uh, other impacts to the lake. So, um, you know, I did, uh, the, the commission referred this to DEP and I just, um, I do have an email from them um, that, you know, that states that, um, it's unlikely that this uh, boathouse would be approved by the DEP as the presence of a living room and fireplace suggests that it would be intended for regular human occupation, which meets the definition of a habitable, habitable building in the floodway. So um, just wanted to make you aware of that for when you go for your permits with DEP, uh, that may be an issue. And as um, Mr. Rushke noted, uh, you know, all the, uh, work done to the bulkhead would also require permitting under the Flood Hazard Control Act. Okay. Once he Thank takes you. the upper story away, then it's no longer habitable. So okay. that issue shouldn't arise if he makes that revision. Correct. Okay. Okay. Just, a, just a thought asked to the board. If he takes, makes, can he make the top of the boathouse a flat space where he can have um, furniture and things that have steps to go up to the top of flat roof on a boathouse and still be acceptable uh, rather than just having a roof over the boathouse uh, sure, why not the boathouse is going to have that flat deck up on top of them mm -hmm. yeah. uh, there are other boathouses that have that yeah sure. well, well, they may want to we, consider that they can yeah you know, well, if, if we were to come back with a, well if, if we come back with a boathouse the intent would be to have a flat area with a, with a um, it's called a mansard roof. So there would be some roofing on it. So the whole thing is not a, bo a box, it would look better. Um, that's what we would intend to do, which I'm sure you've seen a lot of those on the lake. Yeah. I, one, one comment I'd like to make regarding um, my neighbor's attorney's representation. I think it's important for the board to know <clears throat> about two months ago, they came in for an application and uh, with and which was approved, which included a, you can't see oh, this is their house with an addition on the back of their house, and the board approved their um, structure, a covered porch, with so long as it was within one foot of the property line, so that water would not run onto our property. And currently, they have a access easement on my property with a sidewalk. So, oh, yeah. you know, as a, as a neighbor, we were. Um, you know, accommodating, not objecting to their approval, understanding everyone has different needs. I just wanted to mention that to the board. That's the that's the twenty foot wide lot, I think. Then, isn't it? That's that that very very narrow lot. It's very narrow. Their their house is on both property lines. Right. Both yes. Mine yes. Yes, mine. yes. Yes. That's right. I remember that one. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I remember your comments too. Mm hmm. I'd rather I'd, I'd rather stay on this application. Right. Right. Yes. Right. Anybody else? Anybody else from the public wants to comment or question this application? Mr. Irwin, if you're done with your uh, exhibit, if you could take that off, it would make it a lot easier for me to go through all these to see if anybody is still raising their hand. Yeah. Let me figure out how to get uh... just and 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 share Sweet. and share, and you're good. I have to find the main screen, so just bear with me for one second. Oh my God, I got too much stuff open. Um, maybe you can do it. it should be at me. the top of your screen and share screen. Yeah, I'm not showing a full screen. Hold on. Right. Oh, I took care of it. There you go. I did it for you. All right, I'm good. Okay, Ron, do you <laughs> see anybody else? <laughs> Thank you. Let's see here. Uh, no, I don't. Okay, then I'll bring it back to the board. Anybody else from the board want to continue with any other comments or questions about this application? Okay, then uh, 
How about if we have a motion to continue this application until which one was it? The uh, first meeting in December was it? November 16th. Uh, November. Oh, what well, did November 16th? Nicole, is that right? Yes, November 16th. Okay, all right. Make a move. Okay, do we have a second? Mr. Second. Duncan made the motion. And I'll that would it. be without further notice? Without, without further notice. notice. Without further notice, yeah. I'll second. I'll second. It. I'm sorry, who seconded it? Ron. Pick one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I did, Mr. I think. Duncan? Yes. Okay. Mr. Gaffney? Yes. Mrs. Crock? Yes. Mr. Ray? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Mr. Tappan? Yes. Mayor Francis? Yes. And Mr. Gilbert? Yes. Okay, Mr. Irwin, we'll look forward to seeing uh, new plans, and uh, they have to be in at least 10 days prior, I believe, to the meeting. Uh, and we'll see you again on November 16th. Thanks for everyone. I appreciate your input. Have a good night. Okay, you too. Bye bye. Okay, where are we now? That is the last new application. Is there a zoning officer report? Yes, um, uh, sorry. Um, I've got a situation and, and uh, it's getting, causing a little bit of difficulty and I, I wanted to run it by the board. As a matter of fact, I had asked the applicant um, or suggested that they do a work session and they had come in and started it, but I, you know, I don't not believe they followed, followed through. Um, but we have, we have a situation it has to do with our rebuilding um, a replacement ordinance and um, where well, if you may recollect, recollect a couple of years ago and back, we if if you had a, a house that was in structurally bad shape or had a fire or such, um, and you were going to take it down and rebuild it, as long as you kept some minor part of the original structure, we were we were perfectly okay. You didn't need the variances that would have you would have needed to to build it in the first place, as long as you were you know not expanding on any of the uh, the, the variances. Um, and then to keep in line with uh, New Jersey municipal land use law, um, Mr. Haggerty, you know, suggested that we we should tweak that a little bit, which the board, the board, and ultimately the council did. So now it simply just says that uh, you know um, that we're we can still rebuild, but um, but it's a um, um, I, the word escapes me, but. Um, Bill, I'm going to cut you off because okay. if, if this is more than partial, this shouldn't come before the board. You should make this call, uh, Bill. Uh, the statute says if it's more than partial destruction, uh, then they uh, app, then the applicant has to come before the board. Okay, it's, it's that so you, there's no discretion. That's what the statute says. I had one in another township uh, in Sussex County, and there was a fire in the house, and all four walls and the roof were on. And uh, my contractor said he'd have to take it down in order to rebuild because there was such fire damage inside. Well, we had to come to the board for that. Even though the windows were there, the doors were there, the four walls were there, the roof with a nice burn hole and it was there. But if there's more than part of the structure, they come to the board. It's pure and simple. I know people don't want to hear it, but they do. Okay, because what I, I, was, I was relying or, or, or uh, went to the Cox and, and of course they had indicated that a rule of thumb has been that if you keep two walls in the foundation that, that that's kind of been the rule of thumb. So that's what I've been kind of heading in that direction. But um, um, I, I just wanted to see what the board and, and I think you're telling me that um, that that would probably carry that would probably be okay but anything less remaining than that we're, we're talking coming to the board. Absolutely. You know, they, they, they use a 50% actually that the two walls is very, very liberal. Okay. Okay. I had, okay. I had four walls and I had to come in four walls and a roof. So, okay. Alrighty. Okay. Thank you. That, that answers my question. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it just, it, you know, it makes things more difficult, but I understand why, because 
this way it, it, it gives the board the opportunity to try to get things more to be more conforming well yeah sometimes these property the houses are built you know on a, on a lot line so it gives a chance to check it out and see if there's a better better way to do things okay right? all righty well, thank you thank you anything else bill nope that'll do her. okay discussion uh, I have a question. Why do we have? Why did we get another copy of the Annis resolution? There were a couple. And there should have been highlighted changes. We had some comments from uh, Mr. Duncan. We uh, yep. uh, followed those comments. We highlighted a couple of changes. This was this afternoon. The comments came in this afternoon, and uh, that that's why. It's on the conditions. Uh, and uh, the applicant is going to be asked to, and we did talk about this, he is correct, uh, the engineer to verify that the existing uh, foundation wall is structurally sound. We did ask for a comment from the engineer to that effect. So he is right. So we did incorporate that. That's in from condition. Mr. Carriega or from our engineer? Yeah, well, from uh, Mr. Carriega. From or Mr. Carriega. The applicant may have at the time. Right. Okay, is there anything else? I think that's it. Okay. All right, so do we have to do anything with this bill? Have to memorialize it. Okay. Uh, Bob Duncan, it should yes. meet with your approval. Yes, it does. Okay, do you want to make a motion to memorialize it? I make a motion to memorialize it. I'll okay. second it. Okay. There is a God. <laughs> <laughs> and she's looking over us. I'm sorry, who seconded I it? I got it, Kathy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bear with me, everyone. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Mr. Duncan? Yes. Mr. Gaffney? Yes. Ms. Crock? Yes. Mr. Ray? Yes. Mr. Riley? Thanks. Mr. Tappan? Yes. Uh, Mayor, Francis. Mayor Francis? Yes. And Mr. Gilbert? Yes. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? All right. Let's move on to resolutions. We have three resolutions to take care of. First is local real realty. Motion is in order to approve the local realty resolution granting approval to authorize the installation of a rooftop solar system at 67 Ethanel Road. Hearing date was August 17, 2021. Do we have a motion? Motion. Second. Riley. Okay. Mr. Duncan. Yes. Mr. Gaffney. Yes. Mrs. Croft? Yes. Mr. Ray? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Mr. Tappan? Yes. Mayor Francis? Yes. Mr. Gilbert? Abstain. Second, okay. second is also LOCOR Realty. Motion is in order to approve LOCOR Realty resolution granting approval to authorize the installation of a rooftop solar system at 469 Riverstick Road, August 17th, 2021. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. Okay. I'll second. Hey, Mr. Duncan. Yes. Mr. Gaffney. Yes. Mrs. Crock. Yes. Mr. Ray? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Mr. Tappan? Right, yes. Mayor Francis? Yes. Mr. Gilbert? Abstain. And we have Ms. Mook Ardeshna, August 17, 2021 also. Motion is in order to approve the Ardeshna resolution granting approval for variances to permit the rebuilding of a home on 8 North Way. I'll make a motion. We approve it. Second. Who seconded it? Bob. I have a message. Duncan. Okay. Mr. Duncan. Yes. Mr. Gaffney. Yes. Mrs. Crock. 
Yes. Mr. Ray. Yes. Mr. Riley. Yes. Mr. Tappan. Yes. Mayor Francis. Yes. Mr. Gilbert. Abstain. Correspondence. <laughs> the only correspondence I'm aware of is the one that uh, from the Lake Attack on Commission that referred to the application we had before us. Is there any other correspondence that anybody else is aware of? Okay, let's go to escrow refund. There is no notice of refund. Bills, should we pay the bills? Pay the bill. Okay. Please. Okay. Mr. Duncan. Yes. Mr. Gaffney. Yes. Mrs. Crock. Yes. Mr. Ray. Yes. Mr. Riley. Yes. Mr. Tappan. Yes. Mayor Francis. Yes. Mr. Gilbert. Yes. <laughs> Meeting will now be open to the public. Would anybody from the public like to comment? Would like to address the board on any issues at all? Meeting is open to the public at this time. If anybody from the public would like to address the board, please go to the bottom of your screen. Under reactions, raise your hand. Ron, do you see any? No, nothing up, nothing up. Okay, then I will bring it back to the board. Is there any old business? <coughs> ID card? Be in print it. What? Being printed. They're being printed. I'll say amen. Don't stand up and applaud too. Don't don't stand up and applaud too quick. <laughs> Not till we see them, Ron. <laughs> any other old business? Is there any new business? No new business. Okay, Mrs. Crock. Motion to adjourn. We are adjourned. Good job, Danielle. Hey, folks. Good job, Nicole. Thank you very much. <laughs>